thank you so much for being here, from wherever you came from the planet, to be here. <laughs> so I hope that you're feeling the expertise of these women up here. I've asked each of them to share a little bit about uh, what do they see are some key ideas for us to pick up and understand about social media for social change today. So with that, Cheryl, look forward to hearing from you. Great, thank you so much, Elizabeth. And I would ask our tech team to uh, switch on my computer so that we can go through a few slides. Uh, Elizabeth uh, provided a uh, great um, bio, so I won't go into more details about myself, uh, except to say that I've been doing this way before it was cool. Uh, just to <laughs> confirm that I didn't arrive here on a turnip truck. Uh, I was in Fast Company as one of their most influential women in technology, and I'm grateful to them for having an activist or essentially a, a social good category, and they've done that for each year. These are a few of the folks with whom we've worked at Vision Strategy. Vision Strategy uh, is a firm that helps nonprofits and foundations like yours to use social media for social good, to help them blog better, tweet better, to engage on these new, very powerful networks more effectively. So here are my three key ideas, and I'll give you a few examples in a moment of those. One is that the internet is integral and non-optional, and I think this is an audience that, that gets that, but often what we see are people understanding that intellectually, but not putting the theory into practice. So what I'd like to encourage you to do is to move beyond the pilot program and, and the, the feeling that you know, there's, we're testing things and to really integrate the internet as a, as a key pillar in all of your outreach. Abandon your audience assumptions. The digital divide as we know it has changed dramatically in just the past few years. And you should not operate from your old assumptions of how your target audience or those of your grantees are using the internet today. Make sure to actually double check that and, and take the time. And don't wait, create the future. So many of you have resources at your disposal such that you can actually create the tools that people will use to generate social change. You don't have to wait and sit by the sidelines hoping that someone else might figure that out. You have the opportunity to create the, the future you want to see. How Fission helps foundations is primarily through uh, executive and, and trainings uh, for grantees. So we do briefings, we uh, help people understand the larger context of how the internet is changing, how we communicate and connect. We do a lot of research. Uh, I just spoke about making sure you know how your audience is actually using the internet and communicating on your issues, what topics are of most importance to them. We provide recommendations to foundations on how they can steer their giving. We also do a lot of strategic planning and guidance, both for foundations and sometimes at their behest for the grantees who may need some external support in, in making the decisions for how they're going to reconfigure and recalibrate their organization to fit the 21st century. So you guys are smart. I'm not going to read all of these bullets on this slide. This study was done um, at the nonprofit technology uh, N10. Um, it surveyed a thousand nonprofit professionals. It was released uh, in spring last year. I think the most important bullet on this slide is that most organizations, even at the, the depth of the recession last year, were saying that they were planning to increase their, um, their investment in uh, social network staffing over the next few years, even as they were cutting back, as many of you know, in other areas. That's how vital most nonprofits see this new work. And you know, as a uh, corollary, on Facebook, m about 40% uh, last year said that they had raised some money through fundraising. We get a lot, we're getting more requests at Vision now to say, well, how can we raise money on social media? I would say right now it's, it's early days, but just as we saw with email, it took a while for people to become comfortable enough and secure enough with email to actually give money. I think we're on the precipice now of social media being a place where people are going to give and, and give uh, very freely. We already see it with mobile. 
This is another study that was released uh, towards the end of last year, and this focused specifically on nonprofit and foundation executive directors. So many people just like you. Again, I'm not going to read all of these bullets. You guys are executives. Uh, what I will say is that although most of the executives found that social media has been incredibly rewarding uh, for their nonprofits and that they intend to invest more, many of them found that they require deeper expertise, that they are struggling and, and in some cases flailing a little bit to figure out what's the strategy. You know, we see that this is powerful, we see that we're having an impact, but how can we more effectively use these tools to impact our donors, to work with policymakers, to sway the media into covering issues that are of importance. And, and that's something that we actually do a lot of at Vision Strategy is help people to really think through beyond that experimental phase into the uh, impact stage. So we all know that the kids are, are heavy internet users. Uh, here you'll see some very fresh data from Forrester Research where it says joiners and spectators. Joiners are people who uh, join social networks. Spectators are people who read blogs, uh, watch internet videos. You can see that's pretty persuasive in the 18 to 24 group. But even when you look at the 55 and up group, you can see at spectators, it's very normal now for people even in that, that older age group to be reading blogs, to be watching internet videos. So you know, I, I think it is important to understand that you know, our, the future is now, you know, we're here. So you, you have to make sure that you are structuring your program such that you're reaching all of these people where they're actually participating. The digital divide as we know it uh, is gone. Uh, there was a study last year via Pew Internet that showed that if you factor in mobile internet access, uh, African Americans and Latinos are actually more likely to be online than Caucasians. This is a very new uh, development. You know, I think that it is uh, very interesting watching how Latinos in particular are using the internet. They are more likely than whites to use advanced internet uh, including um, blogs, internet TV, and they tend to multitask uh, and do all of those at the same time. People often ask me why, I don't know. You'll have to ask uh, other folks. Uh, and I think that more study there is needed. There is a, uh, a recent uh, article in Business Week that uh, showed that new research is saying that as many as 25% of the people in Twitter are actually African American, which is pretty astonishing when you think of Twitter as a global phenomenon. It, Twitter actually went down last year during the World Cup. You know, it, there was so many people around the world. And so, you know, given that there is such popularity with a minority audience that many people have found difficult to reach, you know, I think it's, it's really incumbent um, for you to think through, you know, how are we, uh, using Twitter, how are we integrating mobile into our, into our audience outreach. Uh, just a couple examples from our work. Uh, one of our clients is Reform Immigration for America. It's the largest coalition working uh, for um, immigration reform. And you can see here, this is uh, one of the websites that we've done for them. It's, it's highly integrated with social media. Uh, what you may also notice here is that there is a way to sign up um, via mobile. We knew that for, you know, that a part, part of their audience, Asian Americans and uh, Latinos, that reaching them via mobile, especially the younger users, was going to be important early on. We helped them to build a network, a mobile action network, using text messages uh, of 160,000 people nationwide. That has driven hundreds of thousands of calls to Congress. It has uh, driven hundreds of thousands of people around the country to rallies. Um, it's bilingual, uh, about 60% Spanish, 40% are texting in English. So, you know, and we found that when you allow people to call, uh, when you send out a message, six, people are six times more likely to call getting a text message to call their member of Congress 
than they are via email. So it can really be impactful. Similarly, many people are familiar with our work at Moms Rising. Uh, we helped them to create a viral video in 2009 that uh, took them from 140,000 members in their email list to 1.2 million in two weeks uh, around Mother's Day using this video. Uh, that sounds great. What, what did those folks actually do? The very next year, Moms Rising was working hard on health care reform and encouraging moms to speak out. They ended up through both phone calls, social media contacts, emails, driving 650,000 messages to Congress in support of health care reform from, from moms around the country. Uh, finally, just quick example, one goal. Uh, the global campaign for education uh, came to us to create a Facebook app. It's like a little game in Facebook to generate support around the World Cup. And many of you are global organizations, so you know how important the World Cup is, uh, except for here in America for some reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, we created this really fun way for people to get involved, uh, and it ended up driving um, more than 50, 55,000 people into their email list from Facebook, from this Facebook app. It's 12% of their overall campaign, 12% that would not have been there potentially otherwise, that they were able to reach in a new way via Facebook. So it helped to supersize and, and turbocharge their outreach. So just a, a few takeaways I, I'd, I'd love for you to listen to. Um, Facebook is the number one or number two referrer of traffic for most of our folks. So I, I think that doubling down on Facebook would be great. I think that there are lots of ways for you to educate um, your grantees, to aggregate and showcase what they're doing, and to stop list building and, t and start tool building. Don't wait. Don't sit on the sidelines of this revolution that's happening. You have the power. You have the knowledge that you can share your expertise with the rest of the world using these incredibly powerful tools and reach not just 10 people in a room or 300 people in a room, but a million people worldwide. I will uh, finish up with a uh, favorite tool that I like um, called Twaza. Uh, it's for those of you who may be a little shy right now about Twitter, but who want to uh, who want to see what people are tweeting in an easy manner. I really like Twitter. This is not even just using the hashtag for this conference. This is just typing in Women's Funding Network in twasup.com, and you can see what are the highlights, what are the news, who are the influencers, what are the links that people are sharing. How many of you are moms, just as I'm finishing up? Yeah, did you know that 90% of moms are using the internet in some way, and 50% of them are blog, are reading blogs. So I would encourage you to reach out on blogs. There are a couple of bloggers here on this panel, um, and we're happy to talk to you afterwards about how you can use blogs in particular to, to reach this new and incredibly powerful audience of, of moms and mom bloggers. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Cheryl. Very good.